Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. For this episode, we're going to be dealing with the question, Who is Jesus? This question might seem like a silly question to Christians, but there are many people in the world who do not know who Jesus is. And with that being the case, we need to teach them about Jesus as he is recorded in the Bible in order to separate the myths that people have created from who Jesus actually is. The first thing we're going to talk about is the fact that Jesus is God. He is deity. In John chapter 1 verse 1 we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Skipping down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is God. In Matthew 16, verse 18, Peter confessed that Jesus was the Son of God. In Matthew, or sorry, in John 20, verses 24 to 28, Thomas confesses, My Lord and my God. And in Matthew 26, verses 63 to 65, Jesus confesses that he is God. We need to recognize that the Bible teaches that Jesus was not just a man. He was not just a prophet. He was not just a good teacher or a miracle worker or anything else like that. He was not just those things. He was and is God. And he is sitting in heaven today as God. In fact, if we go to the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, we're going to read verses 1 to 3 and verse 9. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not God, and this spirit is the spirit of Antichrist. Wherever you have heard that it should, uh, that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Verse 9. In, in this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Anyone who is out there that won't confess that Jesus is God is Antichrist. If you belong to a religious denomination that comes along and says that Jesus wasn't God, Jesus wasn't the Son of God, It's not of God. If you have belonged to an organization that comes along and says Jesus is not God, not of God. That's what this verse teaches. Christians believe that that Jesus is the Son of God. God testified that Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus testified that Jesus is the Son of God. Therefore, we must, if we are going to be a follower of Christ, believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Otherwise, we have the spirit of Antichrist. And I'm not talking just about a person we're looking for. Antichrist means against Christ. We must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God in order to be a Christian. Otherwise, we are not. Second thing we're going to talk about is Jesus is man. He was born of a woman into this world. That was recorded in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 33. He was like us in the fact that he had human flesh and human nature. In Hebrews chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, we read, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be like unto his brethren, that he might be merciful and faithful high, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Jesus Christ didn't come as an angel. He didn't even come as the Spirit of God the way we think the Spirit of God might look like. He came as God. But he came in the flesh. He came in the flesh. He looked like us. 
He had human appetites on the cross in John 19, 28. He thirsted just like humans thirsted. He hungered in Luke 24, verses 41 to 43, just like humans hunger. He had human emotions, love in John 11, 36, compassion, Matthew 9, 36, anger, Mark 3, 4, and 5. He had those human emotions. And he was even tempted of the devil, Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11. All of these things showed that Jesus was man when he walked on this earth. He never gave up being God, but he was man. He was like unto us. And that's why Jesus is that perfect sacrifice. Because he lived among us, and he lived perfectly, unlike us. He's, he was that perfect sacrifice. Which brings us to the next point. Jesus is our Savior. In Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, Peter is standing before the council, and this is what he says to them. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him has God exalted him, sorry, him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, saved us from sin and hell. He did that. Because he was a sinless sacrifice. He was tempted, but without sin. He paid the price for our sins. He is the propitiation for our sins. In 1 John 4, verse 10, we read, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation or atonement for our sins. Jesus was the atonement for our sins. He died for us. He paid a penalty we could not pay. In other words, he died, he sacrificed himself for us so that we might have the forgiveness of sins through obedience to him. But he didn't just die. That just didn't prove that he was the savior of the world. It was necessary that he die, but it was also necessary that he be raised again. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 15, verses 3 and 4, we read, For I delivered unto you first all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus needed to die, but he also needed to be raised again, and he ascended to heaven. All of these things about Jesus show us he is our Savior. Moving on, Jesus also is the king, is the king over his kingdom, the church, today. Many people believe that they are looking for a future kingdom. They should not be looking for a future kingdom because Jesus, according to the scriptures, is king today. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, we read, But unto the Son, he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Peter said in Acts 2, verse 30, that Jesus sits on David's throne in heaven. And he will reign until he comes again, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 24 and 25. If we are a Christian, we are in Christ's kingdom today. His church is the kingdom. We're not looking for an earthly kingdom. The kingdom is spiritual. The kingdom is in our hearts. Jesus reigns over it right now today. And the last thing we'll talk about is Jesus is the one God will judge the world by. In Acts 17, Paul, standing on Mars Hill in Athens, says in verses 30 and 31, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men, in that he raised him from the dead. God is going to use Jesus Christ to judge the world. Jesus said so in John chapter 12, that my words which I have spoken, the same will judge you at the last day. That's John chapter 12, verses 48 to 50, or 47 to 50. We are going to be judged by what Jesus said. We are going to be judged by whether we have obeyed Christ. Not one of us is going to avoid, is going to escape that judgment. 
Every single one of us is going to do, is going to be judged by Jesus Christ. That's who the Bible describes as Jesus. That's the man, Jesus Christ. He is God. He is man. He is our Savior. He is King. And He is Judge. The question is, will you obey Him? If you are not a Christian, the brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the Word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. On behalf of the East End Church of Christ in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. For free online Bible-based material, or to get directions to our meeting place, you can visit our website at www.eastendchurch.org. While there, you'll also find links to more of our podcasts, as well as links to the live broadcasts of our services. Should you have any questions about this, or any of the other podcasts you may have listened to, you may leave a comment below, or email us at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the next episode, when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.